might have our fears. Doesn't matter what they are, though. You got to be willing to get up and make some big things happen. How many of you remember when Buster Douglas had a fight with Mike Tyson? Remember that? Oh yeah, first fight. Here's what's interesting. First fight, and I'll tell you what, Buster Douglas had something to prove. Buster Douglas had some real challenges at home. Buster Douglas was the underdog, and everybody thought he is going to just get slaughtered by Mike Tyson. Because Mike Tyson, he was mean. He felt no pain. He took out all of his anger on his opponent, and that guy could hit. I mean, it was like a sledgehammer smacking you upside the head. So everybody, everybody, they, they just said, hey, man, he's out. They, they counted him out before the fight ever even started to go. But guess what happened? Buster didn't count himself out. Not that day. No way, man. He put Tyson down and he won that fight. What happened on the next round? A little different situation. Buster's belief system started to fade a little bit. He started to buy into the media and the press. He started to listen to all of his negative friends. He started to listen to the, to the folks that, you know, he went to for advice and association. He said, man, you know what? You just got lucky. You just got lucky. He bought into it. The second fight wasn't all that pretty. Right? And he got knocked down. You know why I really lost the fight when it comes right down to it? You know why I lost that fight? It wasn't because he got knocked down. It was because he didn't get back up. Dell started yesterday talking a little bit about that, talking about the fact that, you know, with each and every one of us, we're going to get knocked down. Life is going to knock you down. Life is going to disappoint you from time to time. But you've got to be willing to rise to the occasion and get back up. It's events like this that give you the courage, the belief, the, the tools that are necessary so that you can make that transition. There's another thing I did, I invested in myself over and over and over and over and over again. He's driving my wife nuts. He's driving the kids nuts too. You know, most of them were, were too young to probably remember it. I'm sure Matt and Jackie weren't, but man, every time I went anywhere with them, I plugged in a tape another powerful training tape or motivational tape or something along those lines, I plugged it in. I turned off my, my uh, music, I turned off talk radio, I, I started to make adjustments in my daily schedule and I made darn good sure that I was feeding my mind constantly with positive reinforcement. I invested in myself. Some individuals, they, they, they always think, well, you know what, I, I can invest in business, I can invest in stocks, I can invest in bonds, I can invest in real estate, I can invest in this, I can invest in what. And they miss the point that the most valuable asset that we possibly will ever invest in is the six inches between our mind, between our ears. That's it. Because this is what's going to make the difference. This is what's going to turn us into either, you know, a, a pauper or a millionaire. A successful individual who contributes to the community or an individual who becomes a problem in the community and a drain to society. And it's all about what we choose to put into our mind and what they, we choose to think about. It. You've got to invest in yourself. This weekend was an investment in yourself. How many of you in here travel more than 50 miles to be here? Holy smokes, man, that's most of you. That's outstanding. Good for you. How many of you? How many of you invested in yourself and you traveled over 100 miles to be here? You still got a man. That's 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 pretty pretty wild. Yeah. How many over 500 miles? 800 miles? Thousand miles? Huh? Twenty-five thousand miles. <laughs> right here. You came the wrong way. 